French journalist was killed by a Russian shell in the Luhansk region of eastern Ukraine this Monday. French President Emmanuel Macron announcing that Frédéric Leclerc Imhoff, a journalist working for BFM television, a French news channel, was killed. The armoured transport he was in was apparently hit by shrapnel from a Russian shell. Joining me now is Douglas Herbert, our international affairs commentator. Clearly this is a developing story, Douglas, but what more do we know at this point? Yeah, it's, it's very patchy and depends, you know, who, who you're listening to right now. According to the regional governor uh, who issued a statement shortly after uh, and, and tweeted about it, uh, he was hit, he was in a humanitarian vehicle, an armoured evacuation vehicle to be precise, uh, travelling in or near right outside of Severodonetsk. We've been talking a lot about this city in eastern Ukraine because it's become the nexus of a concerted Russian brutal, fierce assault in recent days. They want to take that in order to sort of clinch uh, control the Russian army of, uh, of this entire region and then later of Donbass itself. Uh, this is a young reporter. Uh, he was apparently on his only his second mission uh, to Ukraine, uh, and he was apparently on assignment as well. He was on that bus, uh, not because he himself was evacuating from the area, but he was trying to report, uh, do a, a report on the civilians who were fleeing that what, this assault I was just talking about in this city. Um, basically, we they think the bus was hit by a shell. It was shrapnel from that shell which struck him in the neck uh, and uh, he apparently died at the scene. We really don't know more at this time. Now, according to the Ukrainian authorities, it's pretty clear to them that this was a Russian shell. There are Russian tanks and troops now moving towards the center of Severodonetsk by, by all reports and eyewitness reports uh, and that they are, they are just saying indisputably this was a Russian shell right now. Now, that is yet to obviously be uh, uh, substantiated. There hasn't been an investigation yet. We, we've heard that the French foreign minister, was, this comes on a day when she also happened to be on a surprise visit uh, to Kiev and its outskirts, going to the sites of, uh, of previous uh, war crimes, alleged war crimes. She found out about it. She also issued a statement calling for full transparency, a full investigation. Uh, but there is little doubt in the minds of the Ukrainians, at least uh, in that area, that uh, there was no one else that possibly could have been firing on that evacuation bus uh, but the Russian troops who have been uh, bombarding that city, it would follow a clear pattern. And it's another reminder, isn't it, Doug, of the dangers of being a journalist in a war zone. And this is not the first death among media no. representatives There's in Ukraine since the war began. Depends, uh, you know, which organizations tally uh, you, you you count, but there have been at least uh, 20 journalists uh, from all over the world, Annette, who have been killed while on assignment uh, in, in Ukraine since this war began uh, back in late February. Um, in, in many of those cases, these were journalists who were traveling in clearly marked vehicles, marked with press. It's not that there could have been any confusion when you're traveling in the war zone, especially where uh, there's a lot of unpredictable shelling uh, coming from shifting front lines. You are very clear if you're a journalist there, to make it known. White car, big black lettering, press. You wear your flak jacket, press on it, your helmet. Uh, so, you know, to avoid th exactly this type of incident and confusion. Then again, the Ukrainians and a lot of the reporting, the investigative reporting organizations say that they are seeing a pattern, uh, which obviously yet to be substantiated, has to be further investigated, but a pattern in this war of journalists and people trying to report on this war of being targeted. Now, the Russians, to be clear, when confronted with these types of allegations throughout the war, categorically deny it. The Russians say they are doing absolutely nothing to target civilians. They have done ev taken every measure that they can to protect protect lives, to not target infrastructure, to not target working journalists. However, the mounting evidence on the ground and the eyewitness reports that come out in the wakes of these attacks, whether we're talking about Fox News journalists who were killed, a Russian journalist who was killed early in this war, a do an American documentary filmmaker, uh, Brent Renault, that got a lot of coverage. In all of these cases, there are strong doubts as the circumstances and a lot of the evidence that they have, in the, you know, through the investigations, points to uh, Russians targeting them. Whether they knew they were aiming at journalists, we don't know. But that this was Russian fire, often indiscriminate Russian fire, and the casualties being non-combatants, civilians, journalists, and so on. Douglas Herbert, thank you for that.